What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of my Spider-Man Noir cosplay series. Today's episode is really exciting for me because I've been working on this part of the project for about two years now. I'm pretty sure I started working on these things when the game came out. In today's episode, we're gonna be focusing on making Spider-Man Noir's goggles from Spider-Man PS4. So like I said before, this has taken me about two years to finally get to where it is right now. It's not perfect, it's not 100% accurate. At least I truly don't believe it is. However, I am really proud of what I was able to do with the resources that i had basically it was just a bunch of trial and error from modeling this thing in tinkercad which already doesn't have a bunch of resources inside of it for me to uh, make things as accurate as i might want it to be however that didn't stop me because i finally am proud of what i made i was able to make that 3d file into an stl which i was then able to put into my 3d printer so the entire video is me preparing the 3d print to be painted and then finally painting it and giving it all the accessories that needed and just finishing the whole thing so i hope you guys enjoy the video also, I wanted to ask you guys, as some of you watching may know, I do stream occasionally on this channel. I wanted to ask for your guys' opinion of whether I should be streaming on this channel, a separate channel, or on a Twitch channel. The main reason I started streaming on this channel is because everyone was already here, and I'm 100% sure that most of the people subscribed to this channel are not following me on Instagram, which is where I make the announcement of when I'm streaming. So I would really appreciate it if you guys would give me your opinion on that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Follow me on Instagram. Like I said, I do a lot of stuff on that thing and I do make a lot of announcements on there as well. If you have any questions about anything in the video, leave it in the comment section. If there's anything that I use in this video that I was able to find on Amazon, that will be linked in the description as well. Um, but that's all for now. I'm gonna send you off to the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. Here is everything I've printed out for the goggles so far. Um, this was prototype V1. Some obvious things you could tell, this one doesn't have the little pieces over here that Spider-Man Noir has. These little circles here, they're actually like screws such as this. So I modified that. This middle piece is slightly different. This one's like taller than this one is and a little smaller. You can also see this one is a little bit smaller than this one. That's just from me eyeballing it. And I wanted to make sure that they fit my face shell correctly. So here's my face shell. When I put these on, this one fits better, but I thought that it was way too big. So I scaled it down, but just scaling it down wouldn't work properly. So you can see this piece here is also significantly smaller than this piece here. I have it enough to where I could like sand a little bit here, but it'll fit perfectly like that as well. These two pieces are, are in PLA right now. So they're a bit weaker than if I use PETG. If you're wondering what these eggs were, we'll talk about that later. I'm not gonna use this part. That's just a prototype. That's what I use for like the thumbnail. What I have to do now is just sand it down. You can see I still have like some support stuff here. Sand down the edges here so that I could do whatever I need to with these. Smoothing out the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now just to try to make especially this part as smooth as possible and then just round out this little piece here. So this is actually my first time ever using this type of sanding bit. It works really well. You can see how smooth that, that part is getting. And you can see my layer lines, they aren't really that good. It makes it a lot easier to get rid of them. There's some leftover support hanging down right here. And this works very well with that. There we go. I should have made the shell thickness thicker. You can see I had to fill in these little holes and there's a little bits all around but that's easy to do with some bondo but this tool it, it's working very well especially and i mean especially in these tiny little crevices right here like little tiny trenches and this little bit fits right into there perfectly and the other bit that i 
frequently use for this type of stuff is this bit. I have no idea what any of these bits are called. I found that using this one after the previous bit, this really smooths it all out. I'll make sure to put a link in the description for some of these bits. They, they take these. This is the kit that it came in. You can see you can see all the little bits it has in the back. If you guys want to check that out, you could also get it at like a hardware store. Now I'm putting some masking tape over these uh, circles. The reason for that is because I'm about to spray it with some filler primer and filler primer fills in empty spaces as much as it can. Since these little parts are really tiny, I'm just gonna mask them off and I'm gonna cut off the excess just so that the filler primer doesn't fill that in. So here we have some masking tape and in here, we have some tools. So these are all hole punches. You kind of just attach them to these pieces and then hammer in. Um, if I could find the proper size. So this tool is mainly used for leather. Pretty sure that it'll be strong enough to go through this. So it looks like I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm just gonna punch twelve holes into this. Oh. <laughs> um. All right, well, it got stuck in there. If I could find a, something thin. It's a little time consuming since it gets stuck in there. Put it in there. There you go. Look how, look how perfect that is. I'm gonna do that 12 more times. So you can see that little technique here, all the little holes. Now all those pieces are covered. I'm gonna go ahead and give it maybe two or three coats of the filler primer. So here you can see I used that brown. It's really glossy right now, but that's okay because I'm gonna dial it back a little bit. We just want the brown on this area and we're not gonna leave it like that. We're actually gonna go ahead and just spray very lightly with this black. It doesn't have to be this black, but it's the technique that I'm gonna be using that um, is gonna be kind of tricky. You can see I kind of tested it out on this failed piece. You can see this side doesn't have enough. This side has maybe the perfect amount but you can see we're just gonna lightly spray it until it gets this dark and do that all the way around um that's gonna be a little tricky it's gonna be okay if some like some parts are a little bit darker than others because the point of this is that it's worn down just a little bit be really patient uh if you have to do multiple go arounds that's fine but before i do that i have to make sure that i clean this because i have you know my dirty raggedy oily hands over here so i'm just gonna go over it with some alcohol i'm gonna go ahead and put some gloves on the side that i'm not holding the spray paint on um, these gloves are way too small for me, so it's gonna look a little weird. <laughs> you can see I'm just kind of going back and forth with the brown and black until I get to where I want it to be. So now that I've gotten like a blend of black and brown that I'm proud of. I'm gonna go ahead and go over it with some matte clear little spray paint. I'm doing this right now before I do anything to like the metal parts because that's gonna be a completely different coating of everything. So um, I'm gonna do this right now. So here's a better look of afterward, how the spray paint looks and you can see with the reflection how it textured just a little bit and i really like that obviously this stuff is chrome so i gotta sand this down and another thing you can see 
in this piece right here, I drilled two holes. This is where the strap is going to be attached. There's a certain way I'm gonna be doing that and I need those two holes right there. But for the time being, I'm gonna go ahead and sand down just the metal parts. That's gonna be a little tricky and like the where these two bumps are and right here, but I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> So now it's dry, you can see that I've sanded it down ultra smooth everywhere where metal is supposed to be. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the areas that are supposed to be brown. So I've got it all taped up, but something I'm gonna go ahead and try to do is I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a coat of this black spray paint. It doesn't have to be this one, just I want I just want a black undercoat for the chrome. So now after adding that coat of black and then setting it down a little more, now it's time to add the chrome finish. What I'm gonna be using is an airbrush and this liquid chrome. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it one coating all the way around and then let it like sort of semi dry and then do another coat. Ooh. So here it is out in the sunlight. It looks a lot better in real life than it does on this camera. But even on camera, you can see that lens flare right there. And uh, you know, a little, a little something, something, but get that out of the way but you can see here i'm gonna have to leave this because it's chrome and i had to put it on so thick i'm not gonna leave it out here overnight but i'm probably gonna have to let this sit out in the sun for three days probably just to make sure that it's fully um fully cured that's what i'm gonna do maybe even longer for all i know I'm gonna, but i'm gonna leave this out here for at least three days just to make sure that it's fully cured so Patience. Now I'm gonna go over with a gloss clear coat. I'm gonna go ahead and give it two, maybe three coats of that. I'm gonna leave like an hour in between coats and hopefully it doesn't dull down the chromeness. All right guys, so now we're back to the eggs. Uh, you can see here that one of them looks different now. Basically what these eggs are for dogs are parking. What these eggs are for is so that I can make the lenses on the goggles. Excuse me. So you can see I didn't print them out to be super detailed or anything. There's even like a weird like thing right here. I just try to model them as close as I can to like the inside shape of where the lens should be. And then I modeled it so that it could be rounded out on top. I decided not to print it in that high quality because I knew that I was gonna be sanding them anyway. So that's the next step. I'm gonna have to sand this one until it's as smooth as this one. And then after we're done smoothing them out, we can go ahead and thermoform some lenses on here. Uh, I'm gonna go into more detail of that a little bit later, but for now, let's go ahead and sand this down. So now we have them sanded down smooth. I try to get the least amount of bumps in there as possible. You can still see some layer lines, but that's totally fine. You could use your fingers just to feel anything abnormal. So the next step is to heat form the lenses onto these two pieces. Now I printed these two pieces out in PETG, 
which has a higher heat tolerance than something like PLA. So heat forming, what I'm about to heat form onto this, it's not gonna affect this. What I'm gonna be using for the lenses is this stuff right here. These are like plastic mesh pieces. A lot of people use this stuff for their cosplay. You can see right through that. So what these are mainly for are like filters for PC fans so that nothing gets into them. But something a lot of cosplayers have been using these for are for lenses for mainly Spider-Man, yes, because you can see right through them and then you can paint them white. They look good and they don't fog up. I know sometimes you could use um, just regular like plastic. Like I see a lot of people use uh, two liter soda bottles and then you could spray some anti-fog in there, but I do prefer these. I wanted something just a little thick, something that I could, so you can see I could bend it a little bit and then I could poke it and it's not gonna leave any marks on it. So something that's, tough so this is what i decided to go with i'll leave a link in the description uh if you want to buy some of these yourself they come in packs of 10 and they also come in different sizes so make sure you get the size that you want this size is more than i need but it's perfect well i guess if it's per more than i need it's not perfect but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use my heat gun heat this up until it's really uh flimsy and then i have this old pillow in my garage very dusty what i'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one at a time. I'm gonna heat this up. Once you see it droop down a lot, I'm gonna put the pillow over it. Now, as some of you know, I did make a vacuum chamber before and I can use the vacuum chamber to vacuum form this piece. However, I'm gonna need a uh, material to put in between the frames that I had for it and then use that to cover this. I don't have that right now and I really don't have the time to do that right now. So I'm just gonna go with this method right here. Make sure you keep moving it so that you don't burn one spot. Just push it down. I like to do this kind of bowl, just get all around the edges. I'm pushing it down for at least 15 to 20 seconds so that the plastic underneath can cool down. Now I'm expecting more of those wrinkles. So you can see it's pretty smooth, except for this part. That's exactly what I was thinking was gonna happen. A little fold right there. Now the good thing about this stuff is I could heat that again and it'll go back to its original state. But for stuff like this, this, just stuff that I have my eye on now. You can remove that from the piece. And I'm actually gonna cut the excess off. Keep in mind, I, gave my, I still gave myself a lot of room to play around with. And now this will actually form a lot better uh, around this piece. So I'm actually gonna heat it up again. Now I'm still expecting a little bit of wrinkling, but now I know like where it's gonna be forming. So you can see it form around beautifully. And I'm just gonna take this off. And everywhere I see a gigantic wrinkle, like this one and this one, and these over here, I'm actually gonna remove those entirely. So not all the way. This is all you're gonna see from here this way. So I'm gonna cut under that. Everywhere a wrinkle forms. Just a little triangle. I'm doing this just so that the plastic has somewhere to move, not with these wrinkles. Cause with these wrinkles, I can't, I can't really have that. Cause then it would just look, it would look weird having one open spot. And now I'm too scared to like go this way, uh, to put them in this way. Uh, Cause I don't want to scratch the chrome finish. So I'm putting it through the bottom just to make sure that it fits. So there, I have it in and I'm happy with the size and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that out. I, I, was just, I was just making sure that it fits correctly and set that to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and make the other one. I'm gonna make sure to move this out of the way, nowhere near this so that it doesn't heat back up and then go to its original state. So now that I've gotten the lens where I'm pretty happy with it, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it off. I'm actually gonna paint these with the same chrome that I used to paint uh, the frames here. You can see I've done testing. Uh, this one's a little dirty, but I've done testing and I think that looks the best. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this out the way. I'm gonna go ahead and paint these right now. So while we wait for the lenses to finish up, we're gonna go ahead and make the pieces, the rings that attach to the side right here. That's why I have the holes drilled. And here I have some steel rings. I'll have a link in the description. They won't be the exact ones because these are like straight from Hobby Lobby. We have these rings and then we have this. So all this is, is this wire that I had lying around. It's like a steel wire. It's, you know, I thought it was the perfect like thickness. So I'm just gonna cut off a good amount. 
I would say that much. And needle nose pliers are like the best way to do this, to get through. And then with the needle nose pliers, I'm gonna bend them and then pinch it so that the ring is stuck where the loop is gonna be. If I have that pinch, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off this excess. Go ahead and make another loop. There we go, so now we have these pieces. And now what we're gonna do is stick both pieces through one hole. One is longer than the other. So that way you can stick one in and then you'll still have enough room to play around with this one and stick it through. I'm gonna stick the first one in. I have mine so that it's a tight fit. There we go, it went all the way through. Now we could this one in. There we go, got it both through, there we go. And at this point, we don't need that much. Jeez. So I grabbed this foam piece to protect everything over here because I'm gonna have to push these in. Make sure that I didn't mess anything up, okay. There we go. Just making sure that the holes go through straight. Oops. Kind of messed that up, but I think it's all right. There we go. Now both are in. So when I tried putting that in, it slipped in and I kind of messed that up a little bit. It's not that bad. It's not gonna bother me. It's not gonna bother me. If like I meant for this to be pristine, then it would have bothered me completely. This is Spider-Man Noir. So gritty getting his hands dirty all the time. So it doesn't really bother me. And I actually do plan on kind of weathering this just a little bit. There we go. Those are in. Now we have a place to attach the strap onto these. Now, like I mentioned, a few seconds ago for y'all because I cut it and there's YouTube magic. Um, I kind of want these to be a little weathered. So what I'm gonna do is grab some sandpaper, not this tough, about this smooth. This one's 220 grit and I may regret this. Hopefully I don't, I don't expect to, but just some scratches, just a few. See, you can see I barely grazed it. I got these scratches here. So that's kind of, that's what I want. There's some that are noticeable. And I don't want to overdo it. But you can see, I guess, I guess for me pushing it down onto the foam, it kind of wrinkled up right there. I could use the scratches to hide that just a little. There we go. And that's good enough. Just very subtle. Now I'm going to grab some good old nail polish so that way it'll get into these holes and into the crevices trying to get it into this little head under it as well i wish i had a little brush to get it in there but i have this awesome i found a brush i could take that off and go directly to the source Okay, so now that the paint for these have dried, it's time to put them, put the lenses into where they are supposed to be in the frames. And the way I do that is by going through the inside. So I go over the metal that we put in there already, over that, and then just, this is gonna take like some care, but you wanna just kinda, you wanna like shimmy shimmy it all the way up. So it's just very carefully putting it in place. And then sometimes, Obviously, it's really hard, but just be patient with it. Dang it. <laughs> oh, dang it. My pinky hit this one and got out. So I finally got the lenses in place, and then I added a little bit of the shoe polish around the edges. But I guess I still had some in my hands, so I got a little bit on like the actual lenses itself. And then I just super glued them around the edge on the inside so now the main body of the goggles are done so now we have to attach the strap onto these rings you can see on the photos the strap attaches to these rings 
which attached to a piece of leather, which has a little circle in it, which then attaches to these little things that I'm gonna talk about, which then attaches to the actual strap. So these are nothing special at all. It's just a rectangle that I had the inside cut out and then I 3D printed it and then I smoothed it. And then I put some of this rub and buff on it and then I sprayed it with a matte spray paint. I have two of them here. This is a quick template I made for the leather. So the thicker part um, goes to this piece that then folds into here and then this piece goes through this way on the ring then I attach it right here so that's a pretty easy template and then I have just some pieces of leather and then I could trace the template onto this thing twice and then I have two separate leather pieces that I could use so I'm just gonna go ahead and mark them and cut them out So I don't know how many of you guys remember these from my Uncharted cosplay. I'm going to be using some of these, so I'm just going to grab two of these and also two of these. So there's two modifications I need to make to these. So in the game, the little circle thing that's on the leather on the goggles, it's silver. And obviously these are not silver. However, they actually are silver. If I grab some sandpaper and I go onto this thing and then I, you know, Give it a good scratching, then you'll be able to see the nice silvery uh, undercoating that's on. And another thing is you can see that both of these bottom pieces are the exact same. And I can't have that. I need this end to stick inside this end and then close it off on this end. The way I'm going to do that is with a cutting wheel. I'm going to go ahead and cut off this little pipe that goes off as close down as I can. I could do that with Dremel, let me move these out of the way. I'm gonna put some safety glasses on just in case and then cut off that little piece there. There we go, that's gonna be the inside so it doesn't need to be pretty. All I need is for this end to be able to fit through there. And you can see this one does. And then I'll be able to hammer that in. So that is how I'm attaching these parts. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this one down till it's silver. And then after I sand that down, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with a gloss clear coat. This bronze actually acts like a protective layer so that it doesn't rust. So that's what I'm gonna do here as well. So now that those pieces are done drying from the semi-gloss coating that I use, and I have, oh no, where's the other one? Hello, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-punch the holes in these pieces here so that these pieces could go through. So before I start punching the holes into these two pieces here, I'm gonna punch them into my template that I have. This way I have that center line, which I had from just folding it in half, and I could use these real life examples to just line everything up. So I could put this piece through here and then make sure that the line lines up. Then I could fold this piece over line it all up i'll go ahead and put it through here just to give a better idea i made sure everything was lined up and then i put this little piece right here and make sure that it was right in the middle and then i put i used a marker i just let it bleed through the paper until it went through all three layers so now i can punch each of these layers here mark each piece then i can punch those so now each hole is punched i could bring these in put it through that loop and grab this piece here put it through that middle hole and then put it through put it through that hole put it through here and then we can bring back our kit use these two pieces it came with there so now that's attached so now that we've finished adding these two pieces on both sides we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step which is this so there's a cosplay coming up very soon uh, probably in the next week where i had to purchase some of these clippings there's a bunch in here and also a bunch of these little things here and i was going to 3d print one and make it my own but you know i already got this entire bag i might as well just use one of them this is used to adjust straps and spider-man noir has one on his goggles uh, however the one that spider-man noir has is silver this is black so we have to change that we're going to use some rub and buff just sort of smear that onto a paper towel and then you could smear this onto the paper towel and you can see it gets silver get those hard to reach places another good rub down and then i'm going to let it uh dry 
a little bit and then I'm gonna give it a semi-gloss clear coat. So we spray that down with some semi-gloss. Now we're gonna go ahead and wrap uh, one end around this middle piece here and then sew it. Before I do that, I'm gonna make sure to burn off the frayed edges here. Now we just stick one end through there and then back down. And then we're gonna go ahead and stitch it right there. It doesn't have to be pretty. I know it's not gonna look pretty, um, but this is gonna be hidden anyway. So I just need it to work. There we go, I tied that up. I'm just gonna cut off the excess. All right, good. So now what we're gonna do is do it a certain way. So the side that doesn't have this rectangle on it goes on the right side of the goggles all the way to the other one. Boom, goes through here. Actually, before it goes through there, this bit is supposed to be round. So I'm just gonna cut it so that it is round. Don't pull it or tug it or anything. Melt these edges. There we go. Cool down. That goes through here. That goes through there. Pull on that tight. Now, we're done with the goggles. Now I'm just gonna show some clips of just me wearing it with my face showed on, but as of now, we're done with this. Big thanks to those of you who made it through this entire thing. I know it was pretty long, but there was a lot of information and stuff that I had to get into the video. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. If you have any questions about anything in this video, go ahead and leave it in, in the comment section. If you have anything that you think I can improve with in this video, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. If there's any products that I used in this video that you would like to purchase yourself, I'm gonna leave the link to most of them in the description. I am working on a Halloween costume right now. Um, I should make the announcement on Instagram pretty soon since I'm almost done with one piece of it. So make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. It's going to be linked in the description as well. Um, subscribe already if you didn't already subscribe. Leave a like. Share this video with anyone you think might be interested. Um, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed the video again. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of whatever I do. Bye.